Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. In the mighty name of King Jesus, I come before you today to speak on a matter that I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to speak on. I mean, I did, but I didn't. It's kind of like when I was growing up and your mom or your dad told you, get on up and take out that trash. And you might have been in the middle of something, you having fun and playing a game or something. It always seemed to be the most inopportune time (laughs) to take out the trash. But it's got to be done. Because if it, if you don't, then stuff starts stinking. It has come to my attention just like the Bible says they would do. People who pretend to be of the faith creep in unaware by stealth deceiving the others involved that they are of the fold when they're not. Let me go to the scriptures. Ephesians 5. I'm going to start at verse 6. There's a whole bunch of stuff listed before this concerning the sins, sins of the flesh. Paul is addressing that this type of behavior should not even be named among the saints of God. We're supposed to be Followers of God as dear children. In the verse 6 he says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, For you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are reproved. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. 
For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. I want to read one of the scripture right now. The Gospel of John, chapter 6. Verse 39. And this, Jesus speaking in your red letter edition, And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him, may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. That don't sound, that don't sound so complicated to me at all. The Bible speaks of the simplicity of the gospel. One more, one more scripture. Galatians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle, verse 1. Not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who hath raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which ye have received, excuse me, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel, unto you than 
that ye have received, let him be accursed. Or do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to stop there because he goes on to certify how he came to know the Lord after persecuting the saints. Saul of Tarsus became Paul of the New Covenant, apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. That don't sound like this is supposed to be played with. Hmm. No, sir. That don't sound like the gospel is supposed to be touched. One more scripture. First Corinthians. Fifteen. One through four. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That don't sound complicated at all. Not in the least bit. No, I think I'm going to do a little more scripture. The Gospel of John, the first chapter. Beginning at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him And the world 
knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That don't sound complicated either. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God have not sent excuse me, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth come to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. There's a whole lot of talking about darkness and light and how darkness operates and how light operates. I'm not going to <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to play games with the devil. Once I came to an understanding of what was going on, by the devil's own admission, once I began to see what was really happening, I recognized instantly what was going on. And I was astonished that this had been going on in the background, behind the scenes, because that's how the devil operates, in stealth, hidden, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain kind of thing. Now, I don't know how much people knew and when they knew it, so I can't really judge that. And don't start with that mess, because if y'all contact me talking about we're not supposed to judge, you can just miss me with that noise, because I understand what the scripture is saying. When we judge, we are supposed to judge righteous judgment. And one thing I know for 100% certain, you don't play with the devil. Because that serpent is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. 
and so are his agents. So are his emissaries. Now, at this point, I listen to my brothers and sisters on CES panel. I listened to the majority of what you said. I, I didn't get to listen to the whole thing. I missed about maybe the last hour or so, but I got the gist of what you said. Now, so if I missed something, my apologies. If there was some fury and some fire and some anger at the devil, then praise the Lord. Thank you, somebody. Because it's my understanding that as overseers, as believers who are the leaders, you're supposed to protect the saints to the best of your ability. You're supposed to try to remain cognizant and aware of the devil's devices. And if you see somebody slide in, you're supposed to speak on. Now, backing up just a little bit, you said we're not commentating on the scriptures. That's all right. Because when I get through preaching on this, you're going to see why I laid all that foundation. Backing up just a little bit, I have always stayed in my lane, being here on YouTube. Rarely did I even attempt to fellowship with others <laughs> because people are messy. And when you start getting involved with other people that you don't really know, we know of these people, we think we get a sense of their spirit or, and how they, they are, but this is virtual world. The real world is behind that, but it's a medium on which a person can come on. A platform that a person can come on. A method in which one can communicate with one another. And we don't, we can't see into people's heart, and we don't know what they're really thinking, especially when they're not being forthright. So I got invited to be a member of the panel on CES. And I'll be honest with you, when I was first asked, I wanted to say no. I did. Not because of Brother Luke. I, I appreciate you, Brother Luke. God bless you. Got no ill will against you. I just know people are messy. And whenever you take on something, you are taking on responsibility. It's funny because people think in the world, you know, they get these titles and people are all impressed to have titles or, or be promoted with titles. To whom much is given, much is required. And to whom much more is given, much more is required. So I don't look at getting more what people think is elevation or esteem the same way a lot of other people do. I'm like, no, I know that bears responsibility and more work. But I graciously accepted. I didn't get a check in my spirit not to. Although I did have a family member the first time in all the time I've been in you, on YouTube. No one has ever said, I don't think you should be doing that stuff on YouTube. You know, it's a dangerous place to be in virtual world there. But 
as soon as I told them about this and that I would be on a panel and how it would work, and they said, I don't think you should do that. I don't think you should. This is exactly what she said. She said, I don't think you should play with them others. Because you don't know them people. And the devil operates in stealth. So I said, well, I'm not getting a a check in my spirit, so I'm going to go ahead on. And while there are some things that I vociferously disagree with, with some of the positions of members on the panel, we had held to the unity, liberty, charity as best we could. I mean, we're imperfect people. And I'm not going to say that I know everything that happened or decisions that were made. I can't speak to that because while I was invited to be a guest at the table, I was not involved in any of that type of decision making. So if there's some other things that went down, I can promise you I still don't even know about them. Most of them. So I liken being invited to CES as being invited to a dinner party. I was invited. I didn't bring anyone else. So I was only responsible for myself. I'm presuming that everyone else that had a seat at the table had been vetted. You know, that they were safe to be around. That they weren't witches and psychopaths at the table. Now, I'm not indicting Brother Luke because witches operate in stealth. And so when stuff started happening, I didn't know about it because, quite frankly, the people involved were not gossiping about other people. Because see, if I had seen any of that, I would have been out. I would have been like, no. I don't play those games either. They're all that gospel. And I know that's evil. So I never knew this stuff was going on. Again, I'm invited guest at a dinner party. Reminds me of when Jesus had his dinner party, known as the Lord's Supper. And he said, have I not chosen ye twelve? And yet one of you is a devil. The Lord wasn't afraid to call somebody a devil. I don't know why we afraid to call somebody a devil. I ain't afraid to call somebody a devil. By their fruits, ye shall know them. I keep saying people always want to make that about sin. These things they doing are sin, but he's talking about something else too. There's an old expression, if the root is bad, the fruit is bad. And that, you find that in the Bible. I forget what that is. Not that phrase, not that way it's said, that I just said there. But it talks about, can a, oh yeah, can a tree, a good tree, you have forth evil fruit. I'm paraphrasing. And an evil tree bring forth good fruit. Well, there was an evil tree. And it wasn't bringing forth good fruit. So 
So fast forward to, what was it? The tell-all? Oh, why we left CES? And Paul talked about this very thing about how people crept in unaware and they left and they went out from among us because they were not of us. And kind of find out Matthias was hiding what he really believed from me. Now, this is what's so funny. This is what's so, when I say funny, I'm saying strange. Because every time I was in a hangout, he didn't say that stuff. And because I thought he was safe, that he was okay, that he was at least clear on the gospel and in agreement with the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I never heard him say the things that he said in his tell-all. It's strange that he thought he's blabbing on CES, but he was actually blabbing on himself. He couldn't have exposed himself any more than if he had stripped naked. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Because with all the craziness I discovered, Anyway, what I'm puzzled at, and that's why I say because I was not privy to this stuff, is why it was allowed to continue for so long. But then that shows you how witchcraft power operates. They can actually do, you know, spells and stuff that can cause confusion, and actually make you forget stuff. Oh, honey, that scene from Men in Black, when they hold up that stick, that little whatever, and they beam that light, and the person forgets their experience. Witches can do that stuff. So people are actually being assaulted by witchcraft behind the scenes. And most of them, I don't think they detected what was going on until it was too late. So you done got bitten. You done got stabbed. It is no wonder why the old covenant says, I suffer not a witch to live. Because they coming in to wreak havoc and destruction, death. It's not a misunderstanding. It's not, oh, they're just confused on the gospel. Oh, contraire, mon frere. When I saw that mess that he was spewing out of his mouth, I was literally, because I streamed to my TV, I was literally like, devil! This man is perverting the gospel of grace. That was delivered unto us. That means entrusted to us. I ain't going to make excuses for the devil. They have left him and his wife. She said in, uh, uh, when, in the so-called outburst that Ben had on CES, Paula says out of her mouth she's in agreement with everything her husband believes slash teaches. I forget 
you know, exactly the words. But she's in agreement, lockstep with him on that demonic devilry that he speaks out of his mouth. These two are witches and they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. And I'm not going to play with the devil. I'm going to call a spade a spade. They did it. Let them own it. They did it. And y'all want to be polite when they going around murdering people by twisting the word, killing people's spirits, killing their faith, blocking up the kingdom of heaven. The devil is a damn liar. If I'm going to sit back and play nice with them, that's a lie. Play nice with the devil. And he's wreaking havoc. Now, as I said, I know that they didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. They didn't understand. I if I would have known, if I would have smelled it. Oh, they were so Casey. Y'all don't know. They were so careful not to say any of that trash. He said out of his mouth in those two broadcasts, 10 hours carrying on. I was, I was actually very grateful for that. Matthias, you did a good job exposing yourself and actually exposing how much witchcraft tactics you were using to manipulate the saints of God. And I perceive that he's not even the head witch. Because the head witch is behind the scenes. But I'll leave that where it lay. The Bible says if any man preach any other gospel then the one we first received, let him be accursed. And in the Greek, anathema, that word accursed there in English, anathema in the Greek, means the direst of woes is one of the meanings. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds like that ain't a good thing. I'm calming myself, beloved, because I'm furious because I am zealous to protect what was entrusted to us. The one thing you don't play with in the scripture, shouldn't play with none of it, but the one thing for certain that is supposed to remain untouched is the gospel of grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul said we were to earnestly contend for the faith, not play nice with the devil and his minions, his agents. May the Lord reward them according to their works. That's right here in your Bible. Paul says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. May the Lord reward him according to his works. I ain't going to play nice because they wasn't playing nice. Oh, they was coming in to destroy. And the evidence is, like Jesus said, by their fruit, ye shall know them. They have left bones everywhere they went. And I'm not talking about the bones they use for spell casting. I'm talking about bodies, people's lives wrecked. Hurt, wounded, ministries destroyed because of them. I ain't scared to call a spade a spade. They did it. Anyway, getting back to having a seat at the table, they never said any of that trash out of their mouth. 
that absolute assault on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They never said that trash out of their mouth in my presence. So imagine me sitting, I, I, I'm looking at, at, at what I'm seeing and I'm, in a, I'm astonished. And then I find out people knew that they held those views and they weren't saying anything. Now I mean publicly, but they were doing it publicly. I got a hint of it about a month or two ago. I think it was about two months ago. When after a stream, I don't remember which one, Ben, who is on CES panel on Friday, for those of you who are happening on this and don't know anything about this mess, it's easy to find out. It's out there on the Internet now. Ben, myself, and Matthias were in a chat afterwards, a uh, hangout, talking. And we talked for like over three hours that night. And during that, we talked about the rapture. And again, I'm thinking Matthias is a brother, not another. And I knew he did not believe in the rapture. And so I would tease him a little bit about this or that. And uh, concerning the rapture, I'd say, like, it's sad day, sad day. Jesus can't come back today. Because if there is no rapture, then you got to go through the great tribulation and ain't nothing happy about that. And Jesus can't come back till an appointed time when many things must transpire before he can even step his foot on the Mount of Olives. So we're guaranteed today is a sad day. But I digress. He said something that was a red flag warning. But it didn't set off sirens because he back, he back, he backtracked. No, 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 that's not what I meant. But what I heard was that limited atonement mess. And what he was saying. And I was like, do you believe, because we were talking about the context of the rapture, that Christians have to go through further purging? And that's why they're going to go through the great tribulation, because there, there is that view out. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I believe. I heard what he said. That is what he believed. It was that limited tome and stuff, that Jesus didn't pay it all. But I'm sure he'll swear he never said that. But anyway. So I, I, I raised the eyebrow and I was like, well, okay, if you say, you know, I misunderstood you. All right. And I do like or did like the way he would think outside the box on some stuff. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't outrageous on some stuff. Again, I'm only responsible for what I heard him say. I didn't know this other stuff. So you'll hear if you go back through some of the broadcasts and stuff where I might compliment him. Well, that was an interesting perspective or, wow, that was really good. And Paula, she was really good at, at uh, analyzing stuff too. As you know, I recalled something that the late John Todd said in, in his recordings that people have put up here on YouTube when he came out of witchcraft and was a high level in the bloodline family. And he blabbed on the devil when he got saved. And he said something I never forgot. He said they actually send people to school to train them how to speak Christianese. How to talk as a Christian better than most Christians and study this Bible and know it so they can pass because they know that we're looking for the buzzwords to indicate that the person is probably a believer. 
you know, you go places and you perceive somebody at the bank or the drive through or wherever you're, you're going, based on how they talk, you can go, oh, I think they might be a believer. And then sometimes they do confirm for you that they are. They straight tell you. If you ask me, are you a believer? Yes, I am. Okay, all right. Praise God. Might even have a, a moment of fellowship. I'm sure all of you have had that experience at least once in your life. So they know, these Satanists know that we look for that. Oh, the devil is slick. Boy, they spoke good Christianese, didn't they? I hope we all going to learn from this lesson big time. I hope there's a little more vetting that will go on before you just accept someone in the fold and call them a brother. Because the fruit inspection, I, I keep trying to tell people, is not whether or not you find a little dirt on somebody. I'm talking about sin because you look close enough in anybody this side of heaven, you're going to find some error, some wrong, missing the mark. Now, that can be an indicator, but it's not always an indicator. The one that I look for, if I'm on fruit inspect, is what you have to say about the Lord Jesus Christ and what you say about the gospel. Do you have the right gospel? That's how I know whether or not you're a serpent. So when I found out, as much like some of y'all that was scratching your head going, what? When he did that, I knew there was some contention from a couple of weeks ago when Ben originally had the so-called outburst, and I'm going to get to that in a second, too. I was sitting in astonishment, and I was, I was angry. I was furious when I found out how people behind the scenes were being treated and manipulated and had been wounded. And intimidated. But I'm not going to put anybody else's business in the street. And I don't have all the facts. And I don't run around gossiping. But I heard enough to know witchcraft. Once I got a few little tidbits about stuff that had been going on. Witchcraft. They're agents of Satan. It's not a mistake. They're not brothers. They're others. They're another's. You can pick either, either which one of those you want. And the evidence is how they have harmed people. But the bigger evidence is what he is doing saying, twisting the scriptures. And Paula admitted of her own free will and volition out of her mouth, she is in full agreement with him. Witches. So getting back to Ben's outburst. People were calling him everything but a child of God. Now, I'm not saying I'm in full agreement with him on some of his ideas. Because I'm not. He already knows it. It's not a secret. As you can tell by how I'm speaking here, I have no problem letting people know if I don't agree with them.
That being said, unity, liberty, and charity, we agree to disagree. But Ben was the one that caught this. Because because of his interaction on other broadcasts that I wasn't involved with at all, he had more of a back and forth with Matthias and heard more of Matthias's ideas. Because even though I was on CES Friday, I rarely tuned in to the other broadcasts. I might pop in for a few minutes and then I have a life. I got stuff I got to do. It's not always convenient what's going on. So, you know, whether or not I can listen and all that. So I, as I could, I'd listen. And I never caught any of that trash, that demonic devilry, that witchcraft, that Matthias was speaking out of his mouth. But Ben caught it. Now, I'm, I hear that Brother Luke was aware. I haven't spoken to him as of the time of making this recording about any of this stuff. I sent him a couple of texts, and I straight told him, they're witches. I told Angel that when I discovered what was going on. I said, this is witchcraft. And there's some things I just feel like I'm not at liberty to say because I don't have the details about it. And it would be speculation based on what the facts are. And I don't have all the facts as to how people were being manipulated and intimidated by them. But that's also a part of their tools and a little dirty satanic bag that they use against people, witches. So Ben caught it, and he called him out for it, and I'm glad he did. And what's just astonishing is I saw videos and stuff of people going, well, you guys are brothers, and y'all should work it out. And I saw them comments, y'all are brothers, and I'm like, are y'all crazy? Are you crazy? Really? They're not brothers. Anybody that can hear the mess that Matthias is spewing out of his mouth, he is so cunning and so crafty with it. I mean, he has perfected that trash. I couldn't listen to him for more than a few minutes each time trying to listen to him to get through them few hours. And I didn't get through the whole of the second one. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. I was furious. And how he was twisting, annihilating would be a better word. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Ben, I commend you, brother, for standing up and calling out that devil. Anybody that would deliberately manipulate the gospel and twist it and shut up the kingdom of heaven from someone, telling them they have to what did he say? You you got to search and search and search and search until one day your faith meets the faith of God and poof, magic happens. Yeah, he said that with a straight face. I read to you the scriptures before I started. 
Did that sound like anything I read in those scriptures? No, it did not. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever searches and searches and searches the scripture until one day their faith mixes with God's faith and poof, magic happens. Nope, that's not what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, they'll have everlasting life. That don't get no simpler than that. So they got to play with and manipulate the word believe to extrapolate it down to where it has no meaning to create confusion, which is done deliberately to shut up the kingdom of heaven from those who are seeking Christ, who are interested in Christ, who want to learn more about Christ and those who are babes in Christ that don't know the scriptures so they can shipwreck their faith. That is a tactic of the devil. That is a tactic of of so-called Christian when they're really witches. And even though I am hot, fire hot red about what they have done, and what they are continuing to do, the Lord going to deal with them. But we need to put them on blast so other people will know, okay, you want to go over there and listen to that nest? You are listening to witches. And they will be with you. Galatians chapter 3. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice faded out there. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Let's see, this word bewitched, Baskan. Canio, Bas Canio, G940, in the Greek, to speak ill of one, to slander, transduce him, to bring evil on one by feigning praise or an evil eye, to charm, to bewitch. To fascinate by false representations. That's exactly what they're doing with the gospel. That is not a gospel. It's another gospel. It's a different gospel. It's not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they know exactly what they're doing. 
That makes them evil. That makes them emissaries of the devil. That makes them exactly what they are by the other tactics they've used, witches. I love you enough to tell you the truth and not play fast and loose and continue to call these people brothers and sisters when they're not. As evidenced by the fruit they are producing, which is the destruction of the gospel and an attack and assault and manipulation and intimidation of other saints of God with their practices. By their fruit, ye shall know them. Lastly, I don't know where some people who were connected to this, fit in. And I pray that the Lord reveal to me who to continue to deal with and who to cut out, literally, just cut off. Because you can't play with these people. They mean business. But I ask that you, brothers and sisters, pray for all the people involved who have been wounded by these devils, who have been harmed by these devils. And pray that others continue to expose them and their witchcraft tactics, and how they're destroying with their own words the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and attacking it and twisting the scriptures. It's evident to anyone who has eyes to see that understand their Bible, exactly what they're doing. I pray the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ upon you all. May the Lord have mercy upon whom he will have mercy. May his grace be extended to all. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen.